The human torch could not get a bank loan. The human torch. Hmm. Welcome back to episode number three of Chasing 120. My name is Nick Minoy, strength and conditioning coach, creator of Get Golf Strong Gym. And today's focus is going to be on training. We're going to go through the speed and strength program that I've been doing for the first phase or phase one of the training cycle, uh, a four week period. I'm going to detail uh, everything that I went through in that four week period, go through the exercises, go through how we structure those exercises uh, to build more club head speed, to build more power, uh, to add more distance to my golf game. That is the goal. Chasing 120. 12 weeks. Let's go. <laughs> All right, first thing I want to announce really quickly, sorry for screaming in there, is uh, I created something called a school account. So all school is is a new uh, platform that's out there where you can upload uh, whatever it is that you're interested in, whatever information you have. So my group is really built around uh, this, this training and improving your body, improving the way you move uh, in all ways that are relevant to the golf swing. So inside the school account, there's a bunch of free resources that I put in there. So there's a four-week home program where you don't need any equipment to do. Uh, a great beginner point for if you watch this video today and you want to start your training and you really want to start improving your body for your golf game, that's a great starting point. Uh, there's also some daily drills. There's some stretch classes. I'm going to keep updating uh, with more and more info as time goes through. So this is a great resource. It's free to sign up. It's free to use. All you have to do is put in your name and your email and it creates an account for you. With that said, I've told this to a few different people and I don't know if people think that this is like uh, a lead into something where I'm going to start spamming you with a bunch of emails and sending you a bunch of information uh, every week. That is not going to happen. That is not the case. I promise I have no nothing set up. And the last thing that I care about doing or want to do is sending a bunch of emails to people because I literally can't stand the amount of stupid emails I get from something that I signed up for once. So uh, once you sign up with the email, that's just your login information. It just basically becomes a free app where you can access all this information that's on there, right? So that's the school account. Check it out if you guys are interested. Uh, I think it's a great resource. And with that said, we're gonna talk today about training. So let's just touch on that first. What is, what's the point of training or, or strength training for golf? Or, or what does it even mean or what's the difference between strength training for golf and just strength training in general? Uh, so number one, let's just understand one concept because I think a lot of people don't really get this or they have some weird takes on this, this whole subject. Golf is probably the most body dependent sport that there is, right? It's literally the only sport where it's your body versus gravity and limitations in your body are going to restrict your ability to swing a golf club. So whether it's your strength limitations, whether it's your mobility limitations, whether it's your flexibility limitations, uh, whatever limitations you have, they directly affect your ability to swing a golf club, right? And I don't know if people understand that enough because like I play golf and not like I'm amazing by any means, but like I at least understand my limitations. I understand how they affect my golf swing. I understand like how not having hip mobility can directly impact my ability to rotate in my golf swing. I keep hearing and like I see people that say this they're like, oh, well, well, John Daly, look at him. He smokes cigarettes and, blah, blah, and he, he's not in shape. He's not in shape in the health sense where, like, he's the healthiest guy in the world and he's going to look great at the beach. But his swing and his body, he's super athletic. He has full range of motion. He has full rotation. He's not limited in any way by movement. So, like, that idea just does not make any sense. So anybody who, who's using that as your idea of, like, I don't need to get in shape. Look at, look at someone like this. Your argument is, is stupid. It doesn't make any sense. It's not logical whatsoever. It's like saying... Well, I play football, but like, look at LT. He smokes crack before he played in games, and he's he's a machine. The guy was an absolute athletic animal, and he could do anything. He had no limitations for anything he could do. So you're not John Daly. You're not LT. You likely need some improvement in your body, and those improvements don't need to be geared toward how you look at the beach or your overall health. Those improvements need to come in, in the sense of, we need to improve the way your body moves. We need to improve your ranges of motion, your strength, your ability to produce power in order for you to swing a golf club effectively the way you want to, right? So that's, uh, I hope that made sense, but that's the first point I want to get across is let's understand the difference between training for performance or sport, we can call it, training for sport versus 
viewing training in through the lens of like bodybuilding or health or or like general fitness it's two completely different things but the point is really just uh you don't want to go like everything in this country health wise came about mainly through the lens of bodybuilding right so like if you go to any commercial gym it's loaded with a bunch of machines and there's nothing wrong with machines but Say you decided today, I want to get better at golf. I want to look better. I want to feel better. The last thing that I would do personally is start you on a program where you're just sitting on a bunch of machines. On a machine, what happens is the machine basically takes care of the stability portion of the exercise for you, right? So like as an example, a chest press machine. So you sit on the machine. It has the two handles. You're going to press forward to work on your chest muscles. So in everyday life, in everything that you do, in a golf swing, there's nothing that stabilizes your joints for you. There's nothing that creates stability in your body for you uh, the way that a machine does. So in real life, in athletic, in any athletic sport, in any golf swing, nothing is stabilizing your hips for you, stabilizing your shoulders for you, stabilizing your torso for you. Your body needs to do it. So you need to have a foundation of stability built into your body. So it's pretty simple. You need to just make the right decisions based off your goals. If your goal is only, I just want to look better. I don't care if I have any range of motion. I don't care about my movement. I don't care if I can't lift my arm over my head. I don't care if my hips don't rotate. Then go ahead, jump on machines and you'll see those benefits. But if your focus at all is doing anything athletic, if you play golf, if you play basketball, whatever the hell it is that you do, if performance or sport is any part of it, you need to make sure the choices you make for different exercises fit those goals. So you need to do things that are creating the adaptations you want for your sport. So long story short, if you're a golfer, you need to make sure your program uh, has those factors in mind when you're developing your program. I hope that makes sense. I hope that was clear enough. Uh, and just understanding the distinction between performance and just aesthetics. So looks versus performance or sport. So the good news also, like I said, is there's carryover for both. So even if your program is a thousand percent focused on just golf and focused on performance or sport and making sure you're working on your stability, your mobility, your strength, you're still going to get that health carryover. You're still going to get the aesthetic carryover and your body is going to look and feel better regardless, uh, even if your, your program is 100% performance based. So I hope everybody understands that clearly. Rule number one, everything in training for performance is kind of built on the layer before it. So if we look at the pyramid here, we have the foundation or the bottom of that pyramid is stability and your body's ability to uh, you know, maintain stability in the face of outside forces. So your golf swing as an example, you need to go from start position to backswing through the ball. Throughout that whole entire range, uh, range of motion, your body needs to maintain stability in certain spots and it needs to be able to move in certain spots, right? So that is base layer number one is stability. And all stability is is a combination of uh, body awareness, balance, lower level strength, lower level endurance, flexibility and mobility all combined into uh, that, that foundational layer that we call stability. Right, so stability training is number one for anyone who's untrained. If you've never trained before, you need to make sure that you uh, develop that base layer or that foundational layer of stability. Good news is, if you sign up for the school, the first four-week program is literally based around uh, creating that stability layer. So again, uh, I'm not getting anything out of this if you sign up. I don't like get paid by school if you sign up. There's a free program in there that will get your body exactly where it needs to be to develop that foundational level of stability in the school program. So click the link, sign up if you're interested. All right, so the second part of the pyramid here, or layer two, is strength, right? So strength is built on top of your stability. So you can only be as strong as you are stable, right? So strength just means your ability 
to produce force in a specific task, whether that task is a bench press, whether that task is swinging a golf club. Strength is just how much force can you produce in that specific movement, right? On top of strength is power. So all power is is your ability to produce force, so very similar to strength, but your ability to produce force quickly. How quick can you produce that force or how fast can you produce force, right? So power is basically strength done fast. That That is power. So when we work on power exercises, we're working on things that are done quickly or done fast, right? So that's power. So connecting this back to the golf swing, your club head speed is really just an expression of power, right? So how fast can I swing the golf club? That's you expressing how much power your body has. So <clears throat> how stable you are, how strong you are, that's going to determine how much power you can produce. How much power you can produce, that's what's going to determine how much speed you can express with a golf club or how much club head speed you can produce, right? But you're only able to produce as much power as you are strong. You're only able to be as strong as you are stable. So one thing is built on top of the other, and that's kind of the basis uh, or the most general basis for a lot of things in strength training, right? So that's just a little overview of uh, the pyramid. And the point is when we're thinking about our strength training programs, uh, when we're thinking about training for improvement in our sport, we want to just really uh, think about the adaptations that we're trying to get. And, <clears throat> you know, before, especially before you start really thinking about power and speed, you want to make sure that you're strong enough, your body's strong enough uh, to handle the demands of those of that speed. So really, one thing is built on a foundation of the other. Just like everything else, you have to have a foundation built in order to uh, progress to the next level and really maximize your performance. All right, so... Let's dig into uh, my training program and everything that I did in the first phase of training. So the first four week training cycle, right? So if we look at my program, it's broken down into two days a week of speed and strength training, All right? So everything on the left here is day number one. Everything on the right column is day number two. So red exercises, those are my speed and power exercises. They're done first in, in the exercise order. Uh, secondary, the blue and orange, those are my strength building exercises. And then at the bottom, I have my special exercises, we're going to call them. And then I have my finisher exercises, right? So let's go through each uh, part of the program one by one. So, <clears throat> right, so speed and power exercises for day one, uh, I chose two different movements. So uh, number one is my med ball throws. So day one, the focus was rotational and horizontal. So these are side to side ranges of motion uh, versus day two. It's rotational still, but it's more vertical plane. So up and down ranges of motion, right? So in day one, I, the so in both days though, the focus uh, on the speed and power day is I wanna make sure I'm creating as much speed as fast as possible, right? So I'm not doing any of these exercises for a lot of reps or, or working on my endurance, I'm really working on quality reps, doing it as fast as possible in this three week weight progression. So for example, uh, day number one, exercise number one, rotational med ball throws, right? So the progression is five sets of three week one, six sets of three week two, six sets of four week three. So each rep, each time I go through is a full power output done fast, done with good uh, posture, keeping my body stable. I'm not you know, recklessly throwing the ball. I'm keeping everything under control, trying to move as fast as possible, right? So that's for day one and two, my two med ball variations, uh, working on speed and power development. <clears throat> the second exercise is focused on uh, my lower body and building more lower body power. So for day one, same progression uh, through the week one, week two, week three, right? Progression increases the volume. Uh, I'm working on box jumps. So again, this is more of a vertical movement or up and down. And day two is a lateral or side to side uh, jumping movement. Again, working on quality reps, maintaining my body stability, creating a lot of speed and power with each rep that I do. Uh, not getting into endurance, uh, making sure that I'm pushing and I'm producing as much force and as much power as possible uh, with each rep. 
right? So after that, I move into my uh, my strength building exercises. So for day number one, uh, both day number one and two, it's a lower body movement first. So I'm doing front squats, uh, which is just two legs on the ground. So pushing with both legs. So I have my front squat variation. And then day number two is a single leg variation with my reverse lunges. Uh, again, strength movements, compound movements, building strength in my body over a three week wave and a progression where the weight or the volume is getting heavier week to week. Right, my secondary exercise is an upper body movement. So for day one, I have a dumbbell single arm press. So this is a pushing movement. And for day number two, I have pull-ups, which is a pulling movement. Again, just developing uh, general strength in bigger compound movements uh, over a three-week wave to get my body stronger, to get my body uh, moving better and getting stronger. And after that, I have my secondary exercises. So on day one, uh, I have a single arm cable row, so a pull exercise following my push exercise, the dumbbell bench press. Uh, on day two, I have a single arm cable punch, which is a pushing exercise that complements the pull-ups, which are a pulling exercise. So I'm just doing opposites where a push matches with a pull and a pull matches with a push. Uh, so those are my main strength builders. And then I finish those up with just a little bit of banded exercise where I'm now working on a little bit of that strength endurance Right, so these are done for a uh, time period, uh, banded pull down. So I'm getting that strength endurance built up after I did my strength uh, training exercises, which are more just focused on building strength versus building strength endurance. So not to get too complicated, but within strength itself, there's a whole range of different strength uh, type of exercises. So there's, there's speed strength, there's strength speed, there's max strength, there's uh, strength endurance. So just to keep it simple, main strength builders, secondary strength builders, and then strength endurance exercises uh, at the end of that strength phase. So the third part of the training program is what's labeled as special exercises. So they don't mean special in the sense that they're these amazing, you know, oh my God, this is so cool. These are so special. No, it's just special meaning they are your opportunity to really work on some things that are very specific to your sport. So I didn't get too specific in phase one. I just did a cable rotation, which is rotational golf. And then I did anti-rotation on day two or resisting the ability of my body to be uh, pulled. So I'm basically resisting rotation one and I'm rotating in the other. So like a lot of things that people see labeled as uh, golf specific training. So like if you scroll through Instagram today, and you looked at any like golf account with golf training, you're going to see like a guy with the, you know, whatever they're called, like the rip stick or special things that are golf specific because it's, you got a band here and we're working on rotating one way and then finishing with a rotation just like a golf swing. Nothing wrong with those programs. I'm not saying anything is wrong with those exercises, but they need to be placed in the right spot in your programming. If 80% of your program is just all those specific exercises, you're doing it wrong. Those those should only make up like 10 or 20% of your exercise, or I'm sorry, your programming, right? You need to focus on power. You need to focus on strength. You need to focus on stability. The special exercises or the things that are super specific for your golf swing, they need to serve a purpose. So like I need to work on more thoracic rotation at this position in my backswing. That's where you wanna fit these special exercises in when you're really focused on a specific area of your body that you're really trying to improve. So they make up a small percentage of your program and there's always a why when you're doing them, right? So my why for this uh, phase of training is just, I just wanna work on some general rotational movement that's not super specific to golf, the golf swing, but it is rotation. For day two, I wanna work on things that are really uh, anti-rotation or stabilization. I want to be able to stabilize my torso when my body's being pulled into rotation. So as long as you have a why for doing it, you're in good shape. It's all good, right? But just point being, uh, this should only make up a small portion of your training. Uh, into the final part, which is I just put some core exercises 
and I just separate it into more lower abdominal versus upper abdominal, and I'm really just work, working on some foundational things to strengthen my core, not getting super specific in phase one uh, for my finisher exercises where I chose core in this three-week uh, phase here, this three-week three wave where I'm just increasing the volume of reps uh, for each week. All right, so that is my program for phase one. There's nothing overly complicated about this program. But what, what you have to understand is it has principles built into it in progressions. So I have a speed and power training segment of my program over a three-week progression. I have a strength section of my program that goes through a three-week progression. I have secondary strength exercises. I have strength endurance exercises over a three-week progression. And then I finish with my specific more specific golf exercise, if you want to call them that, uh, at the end of my program. And I'm going to progress those over the 12 weeks as well. And I can get as specific as I want to or as general as I want to, depending on my needs. If you start thinking of your training in those in that setting, I think you're in way better shape where people get too focused on thinking about only exercises. Right. So that is the take home message that I hope uh, people understand. I'll get more specific into it because I know I carry on in, in this setting of uh, these longer form talks. Sometimes it drones on and it's hard to follow. So uh, what I am going to do is put into the school just some uh, one section that's really devoted to explaining these different concepts, these different theories uh, for if anybody is interested in really uh, getting into program design a little bit deeper. Uh, I hope that is a good uh, gives you guys a good understanding of my first phase of training. Uh, with that said, uh, I've gone to some lessons and I've gone to the sim for my lessons and my speed right now is sitting uh, my average club head speed with the driver sitting at 118. So I'm definitely making progress from where I was. I was around like 112 or 115 uh, at the start of the program. So I'm now getting up into that 118. You know, I'm definitely though swinging probably a little bit harder than I want to doing that. So, you know, the focus is to keep progressing my body keep getting my ranges of motion better, keep improving my strength, keep improving every aspect of my body that I can and complement that with my lessons or the skill side. Bring those two things together at the end and be able to cruise at 120. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Thank you for checking out the channel. Please like and subscribe. Please check out the school if you guys are interested. I think it's a great resource. Uh, really nothing to lose signing up and checking it out. Again, appreciate you guys checking out the channel and I'll see you next time.